All right, welcome back, folks. Now we're going to be talking about algorithm analysis. So we're talking about deciding what we want to do, which algorithm to choose. We need to be able to analyze these things. So we're going to analyze them based on something called running time. Okay? So that's how long the algorithm takes to do it. So I got some big input, and I crank it up, and how long does this work? So how do you then measure running time? You know, it looks, the image shows you that obviously it should be a clock, right? Maybe, maybe not. Let's think about that a little bit more. So we could time with the stopwatch. The standard thing, you know, the first, on first blush, pull the stopwatch out, ready, go. Got it. OK, good. Got a time here for my algorithm. Except, what did it take? Number one, first of all, it says different computers may have different running time. I happen to have a fast computer, but yesterday I had a slower one. That same algorithm now had massively different speeds. So that's, I don't like that it depend on my computer that I'm running it on. Two, the same computer can have different run times on the same input. You can run it twice. The same computer, run it twice, whoop, and now I got 10 seconds, whoop, now I got eight. Wait, it's the same computer, same algorithm, different numbers. Well, different things can be running in the background. Different memory could be happening. Wh who knows what the network, whether there's a network latency that second time to make it slower, OK? We don't like that part of it. And the biggest net downside is I have to then implement it. Right? I have an algorithm. The beautiful thing came on, a big stone for the mountaintop algorithm. Woo! And now I have to say, take that and then embody it in my code, which might be a, a complicated algorithm. It's like a long time to code it. And I may have coded it wrong. I don't want to have to do that. So you think this is a good answer? Totally not so much. That's called empirical analysis, where you actually code it and empirically run it on many different cases and then have a suite of things. I ran it 100 times on 50,000 machines. This is what I got. That's empirically. We don't like that. When we're doing analysis of algorithms, we want the right answer once and only once. So we don't do that. We do not use a timer. That's what everyone would think you do. We don't do that. Isn't that interesting? So you learned something today. We count the number of steps. We say every primitive operation in that algorithm is going to count as kind of one step. And so we're going to count those steps. We're going to say, how many times does this loop happen? And in the loop, was there complicated stuff in there? And if so, what are the, how long do those things take? Okay. So we're trying to count kind of the primitive steps that are happening, an add, uh, an access of a list, a write to a list, right? a subtract, an and, an or. All those guys, that if check, are one step. Okay. So that's the, that's the solution. We, don't, we thought it was going to be a timer. It's not the timer. It is counting the steps. Okay. So. What are you counting based on? Well, we're counting based on the size of the input. The input size, if it's a list, is very clearly the number of elements in the list. But maybe you're doing something about strings, you know, about a sentence, and I'm doing a process on each letter. Well, then it'd be the number of letters in your sentence. So it's whatever kind of the size that's natural for your problem. Okay? So that's the input size. And we're going to call that n. So that's the n. n is either the number of elements in the list or number of characters in a string if you're doing a string operation. Okay? And efficiency is a function of that. So efficiency is a function of that n. Okay? And we're going we, to, we, how do we actually determine that? Well, we reason about it. We look at it and we think about it. OK, how many would it take in this particular case? We re we're not actually coding it. We're reasoning about it mathematically. Okay? Now, this is important. In BJC, in our course, you're not going to need to have, we're not going to rate you on the algorithm you choose based on its efficiency, meaning, you can be as inefficient as you want to, and you're the last person at the end of the day that says, is this fast enough for a real game, or is my calculation of the intersection between my bullet and this asteroid too much so that the game slows down? You'll be the arbiter, not us. Okay? So it's OK to hand in any very inefficient code. We don't care at this level. At the early levels of programming, it's really cool not to have to worry about that. And in most universities, ours in particular also as well, you almost never needed, even in the first, our course is a first course for everybody. It's a broadening participation course for everyone. It's kind of a non-majors course. When you take the first course for majors, we usually don't care about it even then. So most universities care about it only in the second course for majors, which is usually data structures and algorithms, and that's where you think about algorithms, okay? So that's where they care about what the efficiency is. But really, you get a free pass. Isn't that awesome? Free pass for two classes, this class, BJC, and usually the CS1, your first class for majors if you decide to jump on the C computer science bandwagon. Okay? So now you're asking me, well, that's nice, but remember, I, I have lots of different kinds of input. Let's, uh, let's say it's a list of numbers. Well, the numbers could be sorted smallest to largest, sorted largest to smallest, or kind of random, or mostly sorted, or half sorted, or who knows what that list of numbers looks like. 
and maybe I'm trying to sort it. Well, if I'm doing a sorting algorithm, where I'm trying to, trying to get it from smallest to largest, and I'm handed a list already sorted, I take no time. Oh, it's sorted. I'm done. I had to check it. It's, I'm done. It's a really free, it's a free pass almost. So it depends. Many times algorithms depend on what the input looks like. So the question is, when you're looking at that particular input, is it sort of this way, this way, random in some way? You ask yourself, is it the average case? Which means I have, I now, if it's average case, oh my gosh, how crazy is that? I now need to look at that list, and every possible way a list could come in and rate it, and then have a histogram of all the possible things. When it's really sorted the right way, it's really fast. Sorted the wrong way, it's really slow. In the middle, it's in the middle. That's crazy. It's much easier to have a single case that you care about. And that case is, is this crazy picture of a train trying to come to stop at a terminal and not succeeding, that's the worst case solution. So we look at the worst case. We look at the worst possible thing that somebody being mean to us and giving us the worst input ever, how long could our algorithm take? Okay? So, and sometimes it's actually hard to figure out what that worst case might be. The algorithm might be really complex. So how bad could it be? Well, it's hard to come, come up with the worst case, but you have to do this, reason about this formally and mathematically to figure out what the worst case would be, how many steps that would take, and that's what our running time is. Okay, is that kind of cool? So that's important. And a couple reasons for that. One, it's nice to know how much time you'd ever spend. Like, what's the worst it could ever be? Okay, that's nice to know that. Well, the train could go through the end of the terminal. Okay, that's a, good, that's a pretty bad worst. That's a pretty bad worst. Good to know what that could be. Step two. The worst case happens actually pretty often. As much as you try to avoid the worst case, it just happens sometimes at the randomly that the worst case actually happens. Because the worst case could be maybe 90% of the case is the worst case. It only works really well for this 10%, but the rest of it is really about the same as the worst case. And what's interesting is very often the average is the same as the worst. So it kind of works out always. It's the worst. Single case, okay? Very simple. 